So as Thomas mentioned earlier in his keynote today, many of you, our customers, are looking to go beyond incremental improvements to real exponential impacts in both your product performance and in your business results. Now, based on NI's 45-year history of building some of the best automated, standardized test systems on the planet, companies like NVIDIA are able to leverage NI's measurement hardware and measurement data, um, and vast amounts of that data combined with product analytics to achieve really breakthrough business results for their company. Now, beyond product analytics, though, there is another tool that many of you are beginning to employ to also achieve these breakthrough capabilities in product performance and business results. And Dr. Meyer this morning referred to the term digital engineering. This is a term often used to describe model-based system engineering practices that are increasingly allowing you, our customers, to design and validate your products in a virtual world. And in combining NI's measurement technology and measurement data with industry-leading software from modeling and simulation companies, in the future, we will be able to build increasingly capable models of our products, of your test systems, and of the environment in which they will all operate with the goal of significantly improving those business results yet again. And this is not just uh, a, a dream. Uh, this is on the horizon. And we have thought leaders today that are already beginning to adopt some of these model-based system engineering and digital practices to weave consistent digital threads of truth throughout their entire design process. And by having these digital anchors, which are consistent in every element of design, we can begin to increasingly automate very sophisticated processes that help us make those improvements in product performance and in our business results. Now, space has always been the final frontier, right? And I think we can all agree that in recent years, there has been tremendous progress in making space far more accessible. Uh, one company, Firefly Aerospace, is working with NI Alliance partner Tech 180 uh, to embrace model-based engineering practices to help them ensure their goal of an orbital launch later this year. Commit for launch. Achieving first flight is a huge milestone for a rocket company. Three, two, one. But ultimately, this business is about getting to orbit and doing it repeatedly. We did learn a lot from the first flight. We fixed the minor problems and are ready to get back to the launch pad. What has impressed me most is the growth of the team. When we tested the first flight vehicle, it took us over 18 times to get it fully functional. In getting ready for this second flight, both the vehicle and the team performed flawlessly on the first attempt. We've gotten smarter, faster, and more disciplined. Made it all the way. We are ready for orbit. See you at the launch pad. All right, so to tell us more about how these model-based technologies are ensuring their mission readiness please help welcome Joseph Marlin from Firefly Aerospace and Chris Bacher from Tech 180. All right, so Joseph, tell us, Firefly Space, this must be exciting. Tell us about your company. Yeah, well, as you saw in the video, um, Firefly is getting ready for our next orbital test launch. But Getting to orbit is really only part of what our goal is, to provide end-to-end -end space transportation services. So along with our first alpha uh, orbit, we're also preparing for surface operations on the moon with our NASA-sponsored Blue Ghost Lunar Lander. And we're pioneering in-space mobility with our SUV Space Tug. Uh, this diversification really sets us apart in the industry uh, because it allows us to uh, lower costs for customers and that allows us to provide unprecedented access to space. That's why our motto is making space for everyone. But space is one of the most challenging environments to operate in with periods of highly varying temperatures, extreme vibration, uh, a huge acceleration, and on top of that, solar, intense solar radiation. With these critical missions on the line, we need to be able to make sure that our flight hardware operates reliably and consistently. And that's why it's so key that we have these test solutions that allow us to adequately characterize our flight hardware on the ground. And to do that, we are relying on NI partner Tech 180. At Tech 180, our mission is to accelerate engineering and aerospace by breaking the serial dependency between having to know everything about your product before you can build the test infrastructure. 
So we use model-based engineering to allow us to design and build test equipment in an agile way using an NI-based solution we call System On Demand. Now, System On Demand starts with understanding the product we're trying to test and the interface to the world around it. Whether it's a single product or an entire system, that interface defines the specs and capabilities that are required in the test system. And from just that information, Tech 180 can generate a complete virtual model of the test system using 100% modular components. So if the product requirements happen to change, which they never do, but you know, just in case, we can update the design again and again in an iterative, agile process. And with each iteration, we can auto-generate the time-consuming deliverables that are going to kill your schedule when the product is still in flux. So all of this allows us to develop the test system in conjunction with the product, and then rapidly manufacture it to get it into your lab on schedule. Joseph, can you tell the audience uh, how this is impacting your team? Yes, Firefly is a space and launch services company. We do love vertical integration, but building test racks isn't really our core competency. By using the system on demand, we're able to empower the experts in tests to do what they do best so that we can keep building rockets and spacecraft, which is you know, our true passion. At Firefly, we've really enabled our engineers to take full ownership of the systems they're responsible for. And that means that they often work uh, quickly and, and iteratively to really drive that innovation. Uh, for example, as the details of our lunar lander avionics have matured, we have notified Tech 180 of 72 changes to our avionics design. Uh, despite that, we have still saved three months in our project timeline by using the system on demand, a significant percentage of our two-year mission. And thanks to this algorithmic design from Tech 180, only six of these 72 changes have required change orders. This rapid development that we're enabled to do is a competitive advantage for us in the space industry, but it does make it challenging to ensure that the uh, support equipment for our flight hardware is available at the same time, and we're ready to start testing. But Tech 180 has been able to dynamically leverage the uh, NI equipment to make sure that uh, as we've refined our design, we can continually iterate on it but still at the same time keep that support equipment in lockstep. Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of impressive results with the number of changes that are just natural that you can, you can keep up with that and actually come in ahead of schedule. Um, so tell us, how are models helping ensure your mission readiness and staying on, on schedule at the same time? Well, today the exchange of requirements is still largely being done through verbal communication and non-standard formats like spreadsheets. But behind the scenes, Tech 180 has taken those requirements and putting them into a model-based format that can be incorporated directly into a customer's digital workflow. So in the future, you won't even need to specify a test system. We'll be able to continuously integrate the test system design in real time as the product models are updated. Now, already today, a Tech 180 system can read its own configuration, automatically generate a script that verifies that it meets its requirements, and links that back to the original model. That's how we close the digital threat. But that's not even the cool part. In the future, as a customer's product model becomes more mature, we'll be able to use the same technique to automatically generate the product test scripts. And again, link that back to a single source of truth. And not just in validation, but in any test system across the life cycle. But wherever you are in your digital transformation today, a Tech 180 system can still reduce cost, schedule, and risk today. And that's always a good thing. Uh, but you'll be confident that you're working on an architecture that's ready for what's next. So speaking of what's next, Joseph, what's next for Firefly? Well, next up for Firefly, we do have that Alpha launch number two. And close behind that is our Alpha Flight 3, which is our first commercial payload. In the meantime, the spacecraft division is laser focused on preparing for our test readiness review in December, where we verify that with NASA, that our lunar lander is a completed build and ready for integrated testing. So I think this is, I mean, I love space anyways. I think what you guys are doing is inspirational to all of us. Uh, we're going to be following you guys very, very closely in the news throughout your success. I want to wish you and your team the very best of luck as you guys make space for everyone. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks. Thanks.